Some tips and tricks about adding lime to your food plots. That's this episode of Death by Bungie. Two years ago, I shot a video about adding lime to your food plots. That video is one of the most watched on the Death by Bungie YouTube channel. In fact, I think there's over 18,000 views the last time I checked. It was two years ago, this time of year, that I released that video. And just two years ago, when I was standing down there by the well-pad food plot over what was going to be its first year of clover, planted in that food plot. Since that time, that has been my go-to food plot. It's been my favorite food plot of all the ones that I've grown here in the kingdom of Bungie. Bungie. And if you've watched our videos, you've seen some of the stuff that I've done down there, some of the work on that food plot, as well as some of the successes that I've had on that food plot as well. Proper lime and proper soil pH is huge. That was a big reason for my successes and a big reason why that food plot has done as well as it has. I had hoped to go down here to the well pad food plot today and shoot this video, but unfortunately the weather is not cooperating. But the show must go on, right? That's what they say. So I'm filming upstairs in the barn. I'm actually up here in the barn where it's got a nice good roof on it, the little spot up by the house that I normally use on the side porch. I took a lot of heat on this on Facebook, uh, mostly in jest, I understand that. Uh, people were joking with me about the fact that I need to fix that roof up there. I had filmed one video before. And that little roof on that side porch uh, leaks like a sieve, so it doesn't do a real good job for me. In fact, the leak is right between the camera and my face, so that's a, a problem. But Genevieve is downstairs doing the chores, doing a whole bunch of work, uh, cleaning out the chicken coop and uh, taking care of the rabbit, stuff like that. Don't film me. You might hear that in the background. And you'll hear the rain in the background from time to time too. It comes and goes, I just can't get outside to film. In fact, I think I'm gonna do a video down the road here about the challenges of filming in the outdoors. There are plenty of videos on YouTube about taking pictures in the outdoors, outdoor photography, but there's not a lot about those of us who wanna shoot video in the outdoors. And video presents certain challenges that photography does not. So I'm gonna probably do a video about that down the road. But this video is all about soil pH, all about lime for your food plots. Now I urge you to go back and watch that video. I did all, all the basics of soil pH and lime are included in that video. I tried to touch on as much of that as I could figure out at the time and as much of that as I could give you at the time when I shot that video. Since that time, this last year, uh, this clover food plot performed, the well pad food plot could not have performed better. That well pad food plot produced so much and it was so good for the deer, they actually came back during the winter and dug up the roots and ate the roots of the clover. Not a problem, we just frost seed, start the process over. I have no problem going through and replanting a clover food plot year after year to keep that food plot producing that clover. Now, like I said, go back and watch that other video. It gives you some of the basics about adding lime. Lime is very important because without proper soil pH, the fertilizer that you put on that food plot, the nutrients that are in the soil of that food plot can't be absorbed into the plants properly unless the soil pH is proper at a proper level. For food plots, you should generally want to shoot pretty close to a seven or so. If you can get somewhere between six and seven in this neck of the woods, you're doing really good because I started it out at 5 or 5.5 on different parts of this property. And I should be clear up front, there are no tricks when it comes to food plots. Tricks is just you know, a fun way of making a title for this video, but the reality is there's no tricks. This is all science. This is all gonna work or it's not gonna work based on science. So you need to understand that, understand some of the principles. But I try to keep it as easy as possible in these videos. Now, if you've been watching Death by Bungie, you may remember that I started with a very low soil pH. In fact, for the well pad food plotted, it was around 5.5. I had planned on planting Ladino clover in that spot way back then when I had the soil test done. And those results suggested that I needed 12,000 pounds of lime per acre in order to raise the soil pH up to a 6.5 to help that Ladino clover grow. 
12,000 pounds. That's six tons of lime per acre, way more than I can put on it, way more than the soil would even be able to absorb. Simply was not reasonable, was not practical. Now, keeping in mind, the well pad food plot is not an acre in size. It's much smaller than that. It's a little over a third of an acre, and that's still a lot of lime. In fact, that's such a high amount of lime that one of the comments on that video said, look, you need to go get another soil test. Whoever did that soil test doesn't know what they're talking about. Frankly, that's not true. Actually, the soil test that I'm referring to was done by Penn State, Penn State University here in Pennsylvania. And believe it or not, Penn State University is one of the leaders when it comes to soil testing. It's one of the leaders in the country when it comes to agriculture. In fact, Many other states rely on the laboratories at Penn State University for their soil tests. In fact, many states don't have their own interior department that tests soil for the farmers there. They actually ship it to Penn State and get the results from Penn State. So I have utmost faith in results of that soil test, and I'm confident that, in fact, my soil is very, very sour. <laughs> Now, like I said, there's no way to add that much lime. There's no way to do all that raising of the soil pH all in one fell swoop, all in one year. It's not going to happen. It's something I was going to have to do gradually, and I mentioned that in that previous video. Basically, my plan had been to add pelletized lime to that food plot, just like I do with the rest of my food plots, two or three times a year. I start just before the ground thaws. I would add pelletized lime at that time with the pull behind spreader. After the ground thaws up, when it starts to get a little bit wet and muddy out there in the food plots, that pull behind spreader doesn't go as good. It gets caught in the mud. To avoid that problem, I started spreading the lime by hand. Yes, I just put the shoulder spreader over my shoulder, go out there with 40 pounds at a time and spread the lime by hand that way. If you lime by hand with one of those hand spreaders, make sure you're wearing a mask. Um, I started doing that in the last year or so, and the reason for that is that line creates a lot of dust and that can't be good for your lungs, so wear a mask. So I lime once in February or March before the ground starts to thaw, and then I lime again in May or June as the clover starting to grow, and lime one last time later in the fall, in the late summer, before the clover goes into its last boost of growing in late August. I'd lime around that time as well, or a little bit before it. That was the plan, and that's what I've done for the last couple of years. Liming those three times per year works great for me with clover. Now, if we're talking about annuals, I plant those in late summer. I simply lime before I go out and till it. I till up that ground and till the lime, the pelletized lime, right into the soil, put it on really heavy at the time that I till. Then, after I've had an opportunity to go through and till that soil, I do the planting, do the, all the other stuff that goes along with it, and that is a great time to apply it. Now, the annuals only grow between late August and the end of September, early October. They don't need multiple applications of lime for that reason. You just want to get the lime in there a couple of weeks before you do all that growing, before they start to grow. That way, that lime has a chance to work with the fertilizer that you put on, probably at the same time, but it gets the chance to work with that fertilizer to help that fertilizer get assimilated into the soil and help those plants grow. Because pelletized lime relies on moisture to break down, a good steady rain like this is a great time to add that pelletized lime. Get it on the ground before a rain like this and you'll be just fine. I also lime in the spring right before the ground thaws because that moisture will help break down the lime. As the snows melt, as the early spring rains come, and as the the frost works its way out of the ground and thaws out, that moisture will help break down that lime and assimilate it into the soil a little bit quicker. You're going to have to kind of know the area where you are. What are the seasons like where you are? Because that's how you're going to calculate that timing for your lime applications. Now, I don't lime in December or January or February. Why? Because clover does not care one bit about soil pH in December, January, or February. Clover just dormant during that time period. Lime doesn't do it any good at that time. There is no point in adding it over those times. In fact, if it's able to assimilate in the soil, it'll probably the effects of it will be gone by the time that the clover starts to regrow. Now, all the lime that I'm talking about in this video is pelletized lime, or pell lime as they call it. That is the little crystallized lime that basically is a little pellet. It's got a little coating on it, and it spreads really easy in these spreaders. There's another common option called agricultural lime or ag lime. 
That's the white powdery stuff. The problem with that is, for me, is that it's very difficult to spread. You gotta do it by hand, basically. Wear a mask with that as well. That stuff blows all over the place and it's a nuisance to spread. The other reason I do not use Ag Lime is because, believe it or not, even though it's a finer little substance, agricultural lime takes longer to break down and takes longer to affect your soil's pH than pelletized lime. Believe it or not, pelletized lime, even though it's a larger little pellet that's coated, breaks down faster and will raise your soil's pH even faster than agricultural lime. Pelletized lime will raise your soil pH in as little as two to three weeks. That will start bringing that soil pH up very quickly. Agricultural lime, on the other hand, takes as much as several months to break down and start affecting the soil. One of the reasons I think that that's the case is simply because the agricultural lime, it's kind of like saccharine. I don't know if you've ever worked with that to make concrete, but when you put that stuff, if it just goes on the ground and you lay it on the ground, spills some, when that gets wet, it creates like a, basically just makes concrete on the ground. Lime kind of does the same thing. It hardens up on the ground, on the surface of the ground, and it doesn't, uh, you know, break up. It takes longer to break up. I had a YouTube comment on that old video two years ago, a comment that went on for several pages, criticizing the video and saying that pelletized lime was the worst choice for quick results because it has, you know, the agricultural lime has a finer particle and it breaks down in the soil a lot faster. The fact of the matter is though, pelletized lime does break down faster. It can break down with rain in as little as two weeks. And if you don't believe that, check the Antler King website. You can look on there and they recommend pelletized lime for that reason. You can also look at a podcast that I listened to once from the Big Buck Registry, Nick Percy's Killer Food Plots, Reap What You Sow from back in 2016. I really like the podcasts, and that was a great podcast to listen to if you are into food plots like I am, and like I am sure you are if you're still watching this video. But that podcast, he discusses on there the fact that pelletized lime breaks down faster. I've also read this in many of the food plot books that I have read. And I can tell you from my own experience that in my food plots, they have grown just fine and my soil pH is raised according to my little test here that I use right here on site. Those tests actually show an improvement in soil pH after the lime applications. So believe it or not, Soil pH will raise faster with pelletized lime, and it is so much easier to apply. There is just no reason for your typical food plot or anybody working on the size of food plots like I am to use agricultural lime. That's my opinion. Now, if you've got big fields, growing a lot of stuff, hire somebody to come in here and put on all that stuff. That's fantastic. If you've got a lot of acreage dedicated to food plots, fantastic. By all means, get agricultural lime, put it in here. The advantage of the agricultural lime is that that improvement will last much longer. It'll last for two or three years. The effects of the pelletized lime only last for two or three months. Now, two or three months is enough though. For a food plotter my size, two or three months is perfect. I said before, timing is everything. If I do it when it's frosting and when I am frost seeding the clover, that lime has just enough time to start breaking down in time to start helping that clover grow when the temperature warms up to the point where the clover can germinate and grow. Then if I do it again in May with rains like this, it breaks down and that will carry it throughout the rest of the summer with the higher pH. I'll give it one last little boost of lime in August when I go out and do my last planting. I'll do it again in three months from now, basically. Two or three months from now, I'll put out some more lime and that will raise the soil pH and hold it up there one last time for that last late summer, early fall boost when the clover is just finishing growing. And I'll be applying my fertilizers during this time as well as needed. Uh, every time I mow, I put on fertilizer. That's generally how I do it. But so we get to the end of the summer and it's got that last boost of pH raising from the lime to just get it through to the rest of the summer. With clover, that's a scheme that works just perfect with lime. On your annuals, lime at the one time just before you plant, that'll raise the soil pH. It should hold the soil pH if you put it on there nice and heavy. It should hold the soil pH high enough for your fertilizers to work because they have a short growing season and they ain't coming back next year. And like I said, it doesn't do me any good to have ag lime out there raising my soil pH all winter long when none of my crops are growing. I don't care what the soil pH is in January. It doesn't make any difference. I just want it to be raised in April, May, June, July, August, etc. So 
pelletized lime, if you put it on there like I'm talking about here in these intervals, it's gonna work out perfect for you. The last reason I can tell you that I know that pelletized lime works good is because I just got done testing my soil pH, along with some other things here, with some of the home test kits that you can get. I posted some stuff about that on our Facebook page. You might want to check out our Facebook page if you're into this stuff. I give you regular updates and stuff like that on there uh, with the food plots and stuff like that that's going on around here. So check that out if you haven't already. Remember how I started out at 5.5? Remember how I needed 12,000 pounds, six tons per acre of lime in order to raise my soil pH up to 6.5? This spring, one application, of pelletized lime back in March when I was frost seeding and working on the clover food plots. Already we were up to a soil pH of around 6 to 6.5. That's perfect to start growing your clover. Another application in the rain like this, another application later in the summer and that soil will have all the pH it needs, all the lime it needs in order to raise that pH up to where the fertilizers will work and where the clover will be happy and as a result the deer will be happy and as a result I will be happy. You can't beat that. So do your soil test. Get out there and test your soil. Make sure that you know what your soil pH is. If you are lime deficient, go out there and start adding some pelletized lime. Get ready to do it two or three times this summer and your food plots will thank you for it. They should grow just fine. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe if you liked it and if you like videos like this. I try to post once a week and come up with videos. I'm thinking about adding some videos down the road, doing a couple more, doing a podcast, stuff like that. It's an idea I've been kicking around for two years, but I'm finally really considering it seriously. We'll see how it goes. But that's one thing that might be coming. So make sure you subscribe for future videos. Check out the Facebook page because that's like my regular updates as far as what goes on around here. Some interesting stuff. And there's a lot of fun people on here that I get to talk to. And I really appreciate people sharing their pictures with me too. It's great to talk to people. In other places, I talk to people in Canada and whatnot and out west, talking about their food plots and, and different ideas that they have, their tree stands, stuff like that. I really enjoy that. Trail camera pictures I post on there. Check it out. Until next time. All hail Bungie! The second state is number one in my book. I really like the food plots, and that was a great food plot to listen to if you are... I really like the podcasts, and that was a great podcast to listen to if you are into food plots like I am, and like I am sure you are if you're still watching this video.